Hey, what's up? Um, today I'm going to be doing my first album review I've done in a while. I've just been doing some track reviews lately. Uh, it's a review that a few people have asked me to do, or at, at least one. Uh, it's one that I've been meaning to do, actually, um, for a while, or for since the album came out. And the album is The Discovery by Born of Osiris, the brand new, uh, not brand new, but came out like last month I think or maybe a couple months ago something like that it's not very old yet the reason that I haven't reviewed it yet is simply because money doesn't grow on trees and sometimes I'm not in places where I can buy CDs etc etc um, yeah but I got it and uh, I will review it now um yeah for those of you uh, that don't know they're uh, they well they were always a metalcore band they were a metalcore band that tried to be kind of uh, technical and progressive and whatnot and sometimes succeeded but most of the time it just sounded like a metalcore band that's a little bit better than other popular metalcore bands um but with this album they have become a metalcore band that you could validly consider progressive uh this album completely destroys their last album in really every way um yeah so to elaborate on that, what I didn't like about their last album, A Higher Place, was, uh, well, there's a, there's a few things. The biggest thing, though, was their their songwriting formula on that album, and a little bit on the album uh, before that, too, The New Rain. I ha I, there's actually a few songs on that I haven't heard, but um, their songwriting formula was typically just um, kind of they wouldn't repeat a lot of things lyrically or uh or musically um i guess those kind of go hand in hand if you're playing if you're singing the same lyric most of the time you're playing the same music behind it not all the time but typically you know in a structure like that um and yeah that that's kind of what what born of osiris was almost famous for at least to me was playing really really cool parts a lot like really really awesome brilliant parts every now and then, but they would never repeat them. Um, and on a higher place, that's pretty much, I mean, that's what a lot of the album was, because the songs were so short, you know, it was just like, each song was kind of like a couple cool parts with some, you know, tech chuggy stuff in the middle, and then the song would be over, uh, with a few exceptions. Um, and, uh, and yeah, the DVD that this album actually came with uh had it's a really small little feature of all of the band members saying what they were trying to improve on and the guitarist lee mckinney or one of the guitarists uh said that uh they were trying to improve their song structure um the, it, to improve exactly what i just kind of said um they were trying to bring other parts back and kind of unify the songs more make them more like songs rather than just collections of really random riffs um and they definitely did improve on that uh each song feels just w when you when you have kind of a, a unifying structure in a song when you have a part that comes back and kind of like lets you know that the song is at a certain point or whatever that really makes the song stronger like on a higher place it just kind of seemed like all of these all of these riffs and melodies and 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 stanzas and stuff are just kind of passing by you but these songs really hit you and like they're longer and they uh most of the time and they feel just just more they're just better you know um and the riffs are still awesome and you get to hear them again and again sometimes you know um and yeah it, it's really cool most like the vast majority of the album that that has been improved uh immensely um, if I, if I could, if one beef about the album, though, is they could have improved it a bit more, <laughs> ironically, but they improved it enough for me to be very, very satisfied with it, um, and I will, I will definitely be listening to this album for a while. Um, another thing that they really, uh, I don't know, I don't, I don't really want to say improved on, because I don't know if they ever really kind of went for it in the past, but, uh, I mentioned earlier that this that they could validly be considered a progressive metalcore band, like the you know uh, off the top of my head, uh, the Contortionist or uh, the Red Chord, no, progressive deathcore. You know what I mean. Uh, Between the Barrier to Me, uh, when they were metal 
core. Um, be they, they they are adding in um, actual, you know, progressive elements, uh, elements that kind of go outside metalcore's typical comfort zone, which is what I consider the definition of progressive to be doing something that that genre normally doesn't do and wouldn't do, because it would almost like alienate its audience. Uh, and they're not doing it just for the sake of it. Um, at least that's not what it sounds like to me. I mean, I think they're doing it to actually create, you know, uh, a more eclectic and uh, really interesting experience for the listener, and it definitely works. Um, lots of the songs begin with these really cool, like, atmospheric kind of beats. Uh, the end of um, Shaping the Masterpiece, I believe, actually has a, a beat that really develops for a while it actually kind of goes on and becomes its its own short little trip hop song <laughs> it's it's really cool um a lot of the, a lot of times too they'll do it in the middle of songs or they'll they'll have like a cool little key part or like a some thing coming in and like they'll put a riff over it and sometimes it kind of doesn't really work but a lot of the times it does and when it does work it's awesome uh the most progressive or experimental or whatever you want to call it thing on the album though is probably the uh, the interlude. It's like two minutes long, I think. It's called a solution, uh, and it's in the perfect place in the album too. Uh, it, it's a really great break from all of the the heaviness of the uh, previous six songs, um, and it's really cool. It's all clean vocals and and uh, it, it's kind of structured like one guy sings this line. And then another guy harmonizes with it, and then a third guy harmoniz harmonizes with it, but then that guy stops, and then another line comes in. So it's like, I mean, it's always like a three-part harmony, but there's four different parts that happen in the song. Um, and it ends with some ambient noise, some like guitar feedback or whatever. It's really, really cool. Um, I wish they did that like in some of the songs. That would be really cool. Uh, because I just I thoroughly enjoy it. It's it they, it's really well written. I was very impressed with with that. Um, yeah, and uh, as always, I mean the actual musicianship is 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 incredible as it always was. They're just doing more with it than they did on on their previous albums. Uh, there's there's great solos. There's uh, amazing solos in Devastate and Dissimulation. Those both have really sick solos. Uh, as well as as riffs, um, some more memorable than others, but they're uh, they're memorable all the same. Um, yeah, it's it's just really really fun. Uh, there's a, a little, I c you know, I could use a bit more variation with the vocals, uh, as always. Um, there there is some here, but more would be cool. There's lots of switching off between the main singer, Ronnie, and the other singer, Joe, who also plays keys, and that's always fun. And there is a little bit of Ronnie doing some higher stuff rather than just his kind of low false chord thing, uh, which is cool because he's good. I wish he did it a bit more. Ah, damn, that light's on again. I had to split this up into two videos because I thought I heard somebody down here, so I stopped and, yeah. Um, to continue, there was also, uh, there's also two instrumentals, um, or interludes, I guess you could say, but they're, there's no vocals. Uh, one is called The Omniscient, and the other one is, uh, 14 in Roman numerals, because it's track 14. Um, they're both, uh, they're both really cool. The Omniscient is kind of a, one of those atmospheric kind of electronic things, and 14 is, uh, uh, I think it has, like, a beat going, I Sorry, my, yeah. Uh, but there's a really cool uh, guitar melody that goes over it. Uh, it really, it really uh, it soars. Um, like a lot of the guitar melodies and solos on this album, and that's why I've always kind of liked Born of Osiris, and that's why I've always kind of gone back to them, is because of those those uh, cool parts. Um, they really, just, they really get inside me. They really make me, uh, they feel, <laughs> make me feel awesome, you know, uh, that's kind of a weird way of saying it, but, uh, they, they have a lot of that too, you know, um, really kind of catchy lyrics uh, said really, really powerfully, uh, the ending of Devastate, actually, which is just kind of brutal, just by the, the song name is really, really heavy, actually, uh, he said, like, uh, he says, system failure, and then Ronnie does another 
part over it, and I'm not going to try to mimic it, because I'll just make myself look stupid, but you should listen to the song, it's probably, it's definitely one of the best songs in the album. The first, like, five songs is just a really, really amazing stretch. Uh, it loses some steam here and there in other parts of songs, like I said, where sometimes the progressive elements feel kind of out of place, and other parts where the riffs aren't so memorable, and they don't repeat some cool parts and stuff, uh, just, they've definitely tightened their screws a lot, but there's still some that they could tighten uh, yet. Um, and yeah, there's just lots of parts that just just soar and it's just really heavy and just really you know experimental, but fit perfectly. You know, which I which I love. Um, and it's just ugh, damn, that's good. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, all in all, an excellent. Uh, progressive metalcore album and way better uh as a whole than a higher place in the new rain um if don't lose hope on these guys because of those two albums if you had something against them this is way better um i really don't know I, if, if you think any differently if you think a higher place is better than this i would really like to hear why uh that'd be interesting um yeah i'm definitely I'm, I'm, I'm glad these guys are, are progressing, and I hope they just keep getting better and better and better. If they if they do, just keep tightening their screws and keep improving their formula uh, with every album they make. A couple albums, I'm, I'm expecting really, really great things from these guys, just like just like Between the Buried and Me did. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> and uh, what, what are some other really good progressive metalcore bands? You know, Botch, uh, Dillinger. Uh, you know, bands like that. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching.